Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Managing Director of Policy Research, Courtney Rosenberger, to talk all things policy heading into the new year. Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing really well. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. And it comes at a really opportune time because just this morning, as of recording, um, a, a big new spending bill was released out of Congress uh, for the public. And I'm just going to turn it over to you. What are what are your high level takeaways? Maybe who are some winners from this bill and what does it mean going forward? Yeah, so the omnibus has been the main item we have been watching for the last couple of weeks now in Washington. It's important because it sets fiscal year 2023 federal spending levels, and it's also the last train leaving the station in Washington. Uh, so before the new Congress is seated on January 3rd, and we go to a Republican House and Democratic Senate and expected gridlock, this was the last major piece of legislation. So as you said, this morning, it is December 20th, we received the 4,000 plus page text uh, for the nearly $1.7 trillion omnibus. And now Congress is going to try to race to get this passed before the end of the year, and we do expect them to be successful in doing that. With funding specifically, uh, the omnibus includes the 12 appropriation bills for the federal government. So again, we're setting fiscal year 2023 spending. And um, this was important because Congress needs to pass appropriation bills each fiscal year to keep the government funded and open. They did not do that ahead of the current fiscal year, which began on October 1st. So instead we've been operating on a continuing budget resolution. Essentially that keeps spending flat. And as everyone is probably all too aware, we are in an inflationary environment. So flat spending was a considerable concern for government and industries that are heavily connected to the government. Ultimately, the package that was put forward will increase non-defense spending by about 5.5%. And we do see some winners um, there with increases in National Institute of Health spending, uh, typically benefiting life sciences tools, companies, and some other increases there. But defense, we see that as the big winner from this package that was released. Uh, so the omnibus appropriates $858 billion. That was called for in the National Defense Authorization Act, but this actually appropriates that funding, and that's a nearly 10% increase in defense spending. Uh, and that increase shows, really, in our view, the prioritization that both parties, Republicans and Democrats, are putting on national security in the current geopolitical environments. Um, something else that was included, I did mention this was the last train leaving the station. That means that other priorities um, that policymakers have had, those get attached to the omnibus, and one of those that we saw included was the ban on TikTok on federal devices. Um, that's just another signal of that idea that both parties are emphasizing national security, US-China decoupling, and that's a thing that we could see next year as well. So I think this was a good precursor. That's a great summary of, as you mentioned, a, a lengthy uh, piece of legislation. Um, from, from one side of the coin with investors thinking about potential winners to the other side and some uh, implications for retirement legislation and retirement rules. Could you talk about that a little bit and, and what that might mean as we head forward? Yeah, so one thing that was included in this bill that we had been watching was retirement legislation. Um, so there's been a bipartisan effort this Congress to pass retirement legislation. There was a bill in the House um, and a bill in the Senate, and they had to come to an agreement on those. Um, so that is getting a ride on this omnibus package. We're still digging through the actual text, but based off of our initial review, it looks like major provisions that are going to be included um, would be things like in increasing the age for minimum required distributions, also reducing the tax penalties for not taking those distribution. There's also an increase um, in catch up limits for 401ks included and expansion of the small business tax credit for setting up uh, plans. So those are among kind of the highlights of what we're seeing on the retirement provisions that are included in this omnibus. So quite significant changes. I would just mention though, um, something that was not included that we had been watching on the individual side uh, was an expansion of the child tax credit. Republicans and Democrats were holding negotiations to try and agree on a tax deal that covered um, the child tax credit as well as other priorities on on the corporate tax side, such as the research and development expensing and that interest deduction. Ultimately, they weren't able to come together on a deal. I would say though, you know, we are expecting gridlock next uh, Congress with the Republican House and Democratic Senate, but there is a potential for a deal on some of these tax issues. It's not going to be easy, again, split Congress, but it's possible that as we get further into 2023, we could see a compromise emerge, especially if the economic environment and therefore political considerations for both parties warrant some type of a deal. 
Yeah, and that'll be important to watch because that could be a, a pretty significant source of discretionary income and spending uh, in the coming years if that were to, uh, to get passed at some point in the future. Um, finally, a theme that you all have been talking about and writing about is the return of deficit politics in 2023. So I'll ask, was uh, anything around the debt ceiling included in this bill? And if not, how does that set up, uh, how does that set up for 2023? Yeah, the debt ceiling was not included in this package. It does have to be raised next year. Uh, there's not an exact date on when. Estimates from the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget are currently around summer, but it could end up being earlier or later in the year. So certainly something that we're going to be watching because it has the potential to be contentious. Uh, you mentioned we've been writing about the return for deficit politics. So next year we have, again, the split government, Republican House, Democratic Senate. We have federal debt levels that are still near levels that we haven't seen since post-World War II. Tax revenues are set to slow. Interest costs are rising. In fact, our estimates uh, for interest costs are that they could add $225 billion to the federal budget deficit for, the next, for this fiscal year. So huge return to deficit politics is primed. We expect Republicans to want spending cuts in return for lifting the debt ceiling. We expect Democrats to rebuff those efforts. Um, so it's going to be probably a volatile process as they try to find a way to get a deal to raise the debt ceiling. We could certainly go to the brink, similar to 2011. And that means that we have both political volatility as well as market volatility as concerns grow the closest that we get to that debt ceiling deadline. So that's something that's really important that we're going to be watching. Um, we had been hoping that maybe they would deal with it in the omnibus package, but that didn't end up happening. Well, certainly something to pay attention to as we move forward, as we head into 2023. And we'll be glad to have you all uh, talking us through it the entire way. So we'll hope to talk to you again next year. And thank you so much for the time today, Courtney. Thank you for having me.